Why the f is Islam Makachev so good? He clips him behind that. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. UFC champion now. He's really, really running through people. Unfortunately, myself somewhat included. Somewhat. I don't know if it was as easy for him on the feet as some of these other fights, but he was able to beat me in a round, which is upsetting to say the least. We're gonna get to the main reason why he's so good at the end of this video. Make sure you stay watching until then. But first, this guy has been training from a super young age and he started with an incredible coach from the get-go. Now you see this in Floyd Mayweather, okay, having his father as his coach. You see this in Khabib having his father as his coach. Okay, you see this in many people who start right away with an elite level coach, right? This is a huge part of it. And Mr. Makachev started with Khabib's father as his coach right away, right? So he's gonna get elite level technique from the get go, super important. Number two, this guy is ridiculous. Ridiculously strong. Now, obviously, people are fighting in the UFC. Everybody's strong. I'm really strong, especially in the clinch. This guy is another level of strong. He is strength is his main gift. And you hear anybody that's fought the guy talk about it. Me personally, I didn't feel he was super strong in the clinch, um, but that's because that's one of my main areas of focus in my martial arts practice. I feel like clinch is underdeveloped in most MMA fighters, so I focused on that heavily. And because of that, I have incredibly good positioning and gripping in the clinch. He wasn't able to mess with me in the clinch. But when this dude got on top of me, he ended up getting to a single and getting me down to my butt. And then once he got like over me, on top of me, past most of my guard, Holy cow. This dude felt like he was made of rocks, right? Like, you know that 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 superhero, the I think it's his name's Thing, Marvel character, made of rocks, like that dude. Super strong. And his ground and pound, like obviously he has an incredible top game, submission game, but his ground and pound was really hard from a very close position. If you watch my fight with him, he was like doing these like little short shots and it was hitting me in the forehead. Now getting hit in the forehead isn't that bad. I'm not worried about getting hit in the forehead. That won't even make me move most of the time. That won't make me adjust. When he was hitting me in the forehead, it was extremely annoying. It made me very uncomfortable. Not like, oh, I'm gonna get knocked out or something like that, but like, Ugh, like stop doing that. Like, I really want you to stop doing that right now. Don't do it ever again. Okay, so like the amount of force that he's able to generate from so close is actually incredible. I don't know what he did to develop that. I think it's probably a, a, a gift of his, his genetic line, which is a great gift to have. Number three, this guy's a southpaw. Okay, and being southpaw is almost a superpower. It's getting a little bit e easier for people to beat them because there's so much knowledge on YouTube now. I will definitely do uh, an episode on southpaw versus orthodox, open stance versus closed stance in the future. So look forward to that. But a lot of people still really struggle with how to fight a southpaw. And this dude is pretty good as a southpaw. If we look at him Compared to Khabib, he's got way better striking than Khabib. His, he's got great kicks, which is something that we don't see Khabib really throw kicks, right? He's got some hands, but he almost never kicks. Islam can kick, right? He almost hit me with a left high kick. He did hit me with a left body kick, although I pulled it through. It's still, it was still quite threatening, his striking, which is difficult to beat somebody that is good at striking and great on the ground. Cause you're like, oh, I don't want to get taken down by this guy. And then he's not even thinking takedown yet. He's just trying to light you up on the feet. Then you start worrying about the striking. And then as soon as you start worrying about the striking, boom, he's in on your legs or he's in in the clinch and he's chucking you up. Can be a really difficult problem to solve, right? So him being southpaw, I think is a huge factor 
on why he's so good. Number four, he's super well-rounded. Okay, obviously this guy has a really good top game. Everybody's seen his submissions, his Kimura attack, his rear naked choke. He's got power on the feet. He's got a good top game. He also has a really good guard. If you see this guy on his back, which doesn't happen very often, he's actually got really strong triangle arm lock attack game off of his back, which that's just another layer. So even if he gets you down, you're able to reverse him and you're on top, it's still not easy. Not even close, because he's super strong, he can keep you close, and then he's gonna attack you with these triangles and arm bars until you posture up, and now he's probably gonna come up and punch an underhook and get back up. You gotta deal with the whole thing all over again, right? It's a really complicated problem. Number five, this, I believe, is the real ace in the hole card up the sleeve that this guy has, okay? Sambo, combat Sambo. He's a combat sambo world champion in 2016, apparently, according to Wikipedia, which is crazy because I thought he was already in the UFC at that time, be in the UFC and then to go win a world combat sambo championship and then continue on in the UFC. That's kind of wild. Maybe that's wrong. Maybe Wikipedia is wrong. You can't always trust it. But regardless, he's been doing sambo from a very young age. Okay, we all know these guys through sambo. Right? We all know that Dagestanis are all good at Sambo. Why is that so hard for us to deal with? In North America, we have good freestyle wrestling, we've got pretty good Greco wrestling, and we've got good Jiu Jitsu. So why are we not able to deal with these Sambo guys? Two reasons, in my opinion, two reasons. Number one, Judo, okay? Sambo has a lot of Judo in it. When you're dealing with somebody that is good at judo and we're dealing with takedowns and wall scenarios, it's like you have to deal with four obstacles instead of two. When you're dealing with a freestyle wrestler, they are really good with their arms, okay? They're gonna attack your legs, they're gonna attack the upper body, okay? But it's very arm intensive, right? Single legs, knee taps, coming up to the body lock. Judo people and sambo people, they can use their legs and their arms. So you'll see oftentimes Khabib, Islam, all these guys are attacking the legs and the person's defending the legs and then boom, they use their leg to hit like uh, Uchigari, inside trip, right? Kosoto, outside trip, right? They're, they're using their whole body in these takedowns. And judo also is a clinching art. As I said before, a lot of MMA fighters do not work heavily on their clinch. Okay? And clinch is a really situ easy situation to create. Much easier situation to create than the mount or the back control position. If I, I just have to shoot to a leg and come up, right? And now I'm in a clinching situation, right? So Islam, now he's gotten even better at the clinch, it seems, even better at judo. He's controlling guys with double overhook. Who the hell does that? That never happens. You never see that in MMA. He's got double overhooks. He's pinching your arms together and keeping his body in a strong position. This is the, all clinch is based off of position. If you have a strong position, you'll probably beat the other guy, regardless of strength. No matter what your, what your perception is, it's not strength, it is technique, right? Position, right? So he's got better position. He's got the guy's arms pinched in. The other guy's like, oh, oh. I don't want to get thrown. I don't want to get thrown. Please don't throw me. And then boom, boom, knees to the body. He's mixing judo with knees. And that's something that could be really common in sambo, especially combat sambo, because you're able to knee the person. And then you're also able to grab knees and stuff. So judo becomes very effective, right? And working between the two, it only makes sense. You even saw Ronda Rousey do this when everybody was worried about her throw. She just started kneeing people and she started finishing people with knees. They're really, really interconnected. And Makachev is using this. Not many other people are. He is definitely doing it. The last piece of this combat sambo situation is it's almost like folk style wrestling. So I don't know if they do a lot of folk style wrestling. I'm not sure about that but I know they use a lot of the same techniques as folk style does. They use leg rides. That's all what I'm talking about, the leg ride. He wasn't able to take me down with this clinch. I was able to frame and keep my good position and get out. He shot to my leg, he got me to my butt. Once I was on my butt, 
rap, rap, rap. He wrapped up my ankles, okay? So now I can't move, right? I'm trying to use my butterfly guard. It didn't work out. He was able to butter through my guard. And this is what they're doing. They're using leg rides. Instead of trying to get Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu positioning, like the mount, like the back control, especially back control belly up with a body triangle, they don't care about that. They just want to keep you down and stay on top. That way, boom, boom, they can smash. And if they're using their legs to ride your legs and wrap your knees up, wrap your legs up, immobilize them, now their hands are much freer, okay? To throw shots, to grab things, and rip your arms off, okay? So these are the real pieces of the puzzle here. You even hear Khabib talk about this. You hear Khabib talk about how he controls people with his legs so he can use his ground and pound. Now I think Khabib has better ground and pound than Islam, but Islam probably has better submission attacks, right? So this is the puzzle for everybody to solve. How do you beat a guy that can beat you in the clinch, that when you defend the clinch, he knees you in the body, okay? That once he can get you down, he wraps you up with his legs and then uses his arms to assault you with ground and pound and submission attacks. I may post a video on how to beat Makachev because after I fought him, I fought his teammate Rustam, they have a very similar style. He was far more successful and I've continued on this pathway since then. So I do believe I have some answers to the Makachev problem. If you have some ideas on how you think Makachev can be beaten, drop a comment, okay? Drop a comment, we'll start a little conversation. We can see if maybe some of your brains are in line with what I'm thinking. All right, have a great day, people. I'll talk to you soon. Stay tuned to the channel, all right? Because we're gonna keep bringing you this heat.